When I was little, we'd handed out tracks on the way home from school, fourth grade, fifth grade. We would throw track bombs outside the windows of the car or <laughs> throw them on the porches. Was that a good idea? No. We're going to talk about evangelism. <laughs> Newt Larson, Pastorpedia with Jeff Bogue and Jim Brown by Zoom. Welcome, guys. Let's talk about evangelism. How, should we teach methods? How about the gospel bomb that you throw? But should we teach methods? Jeff? I think, I think if they're helpful, it's funny. I remember passing out tracks on Sunday afternoon with my dad, going door to door and ringing people's doorbells and, and uh, growing up doing that a little bit. So I, I, think we, I think there's times that methods are helpful. I think a lot of times they're not. Any, anything that looks like a sales pitch um, is not helpful. Anything that reminds people to love lost people and to have their soul on their mind is helpful. And so if, there, if there's a method that does that, that engages a relationship or a conversation, yes. If it's a just throw the pitch out there and try to check one off, I think those often do more harm than good. I, I would say, in addition to that, I would say, you know, you guys have heard this, maybe others have, but evangelism is a conversation, not a presentation. Yeah. And, um, and for me personally, um, I've used evangelism explosion, two diagnosis questions. I've used the Roman road, but more than more often than not, I'm finding myself uh, kind of just bringing up these two, two things. One is, Hey, are you connected to a church anywhere? That tells you a lot. And then I'll ask them, um, in conversation, if the spirit leads me to that, Hey, what do you do with Jesus? Uh, I find myself just jumping in a conversation and being a listener. Yeah, I think, I think, I think methods like that, that are good questions, right? So we'll call it God talk. You know, if you want to know about me, I'm going to maybe read my Bible or pray or talk about the church, those kind of things. I got a buddy uh, down in Georgia, actually one of our campus pastors, he, he says to people, he says, uh, he says, when, when, do, uh, when does your mom say you accepted Jesus? And the person will answer, then he'll say, when would Jesus say you accepted Jesus? Right? So there's like, but those are conversation things. They cause a little bit of a smile, but it's not the pitch. I, I would really stay away from that, which is what we did in the track days. Yeah. And I, I, I was trained in the four laws by crew and I, I love that, but I'm not sure methods can force somebody. I'm not sure anybody comes to Christ through just saying a prayer. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to be conversant about talking about what it means to be connected with Christ. My hobby horse would be that the pastor needs to give constant repetition explaining the cross. Mm. What, what, what would be other hobby horses that you guys have? about personal evangelism or the church? Yeah, big one for me is I, I just want people to, to see the harvest. Uh, you know, Jesus is looking to the harvest. Look, it's, it's, the harvest is ripe, you know. And so I, I tell uh, kind of a, a repetition for mine is like, let's not forget that every human being has a soul and they have an eternal destiny. They're going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell and there is no in between. And the reason that you are salt and you are light is so that you can affect that eternal destiny and to, to share Christ with them. That's why, that's why you have your job. That's why you're on your team. That's why you live in your neighborhood is because God loved those people so much that he put you salt and light into their, their life. So we'll talk about it that way a lot. I, I think when people, I, I would say this, Jeff, I'll jump in there and say that every at the end of every decision, every goal you have, every um, thing on your day timer, every appointment, there's a relationship that's there. And if mm -hmm. you keep in mind, at the end of every decision that you're making, there's a person. You're constantly thinking about, how can I connect to that person? Relationships are the most important thing. That's why God has us here. So I'm always thinking along the lines of relationship. And so I'm thinking, well, does this person know Christ or not? I'm meeting them, but there's a relationship. Um, so I'm always thinking about there's always a relationship that God wants me to connect with. And that's the, that's the spirit of what we would teach. And if you love a person, you have to care about their soul. It's impossible to separate those two things. 
Let's talk about church strategy as it relates to what you guys have just said. How do we reach, everybody knows the deal about musical churches, and I think it's great when lapsed people go to a church finally, uh, lapsed Protestants or Catholics or Jews, that they try, but how do, how do we help our churches major on touches with unbelievers rather than just fill the pew night and come to our church? Jim? Well, you, you get them on mission outside of the church. Uh, you, you find out your neighbor's name. We do prayer walks to our community. We take, uh, just take over a pie to your neighbor, introduce yourself. You got to get to know the people to develop, to get a chance to even have a conversation with them. Even here at Grace, we have a park that invites people from the neighborhood to come into. We have open gym. They're coming in playing basketball, running around our track, lifting weights. We're giving ways that people already do life. And then you're doing life with them. And then a conversation comes up. They don't feel like they're forced in. And so you're getting people who are unchurched and people who don't know Christ. Yeah. And I, and I would say that's actually a lot of our same philosophy that we're going to, we call it leading with evangelism. When we're making a decision, the biggest question we're asking is how do we make Jesus make sense to people? Mm -hmm. And so how do you help that relationship? What's the platform? Where are they going to meet you? We use sports a lot. We use service uh, projects a lot. Um, but I, I would say our biggest push is we want the individual to have their eye on other individuals in their life. So I actually don't want the people of the church to think in order to share Christ with my friend, I need to bring them to a yeah. church event yeah. that God sent the church into those people's lives. That's you guys. Now we can help some, right? Which is fine. But we don't have like rec leagues for our church and sports. All of that would be outreach oriented. I agree. And, and, and if you're not using it that way, then you're in some ways you're not invited to use it unless you're using it for evangelism. I would agree with that, Jeff. I, and I would say this, we're talking to pastors, and ministry leaders. We got to be modeling it. You know, it yeah, shows up in our time. messages. It shows up in our conversation, our stories. Why would we want our church to be on mission if we're not, if we're not doing it. And so I think it just infiltrates its way into messages, illustrations. Hey, I was talking to someone this week and hey, this took place. And if they see you doing it, it can encourage them to do it too. I like to say to pastors, if, if your evangelism story is more than six months old, you're not doing the work of an evangelist. Yeah. Right. So we tend to have one and tell it, tell it, tell it. And that, and when we do that, we're not modeling, and we're we're not we're not doing the work that that Paul told us to do, told Timothy to do. To be serious to us, I, our evangelism guy would say to me often, "You haven't told a story about witnessing for a whole month. I, how do we teach our people to to be witnesses? What has helped you? The old way was take them out door to door and train them by doing. I'm not sure." people answer the door anymore. I, I go back to what I just said, Newt and Jeff. I think Jeff would attest to this is tell your story. Tell them how you're doing it. I think they need to see it and hear it and, and see you model it. And it, it's, it's just living life and talking about having some Jesus talk somewhere in the midst of it. That's the easiest way. I, I would say people, if you get them, if they feel like there's a method, then they get all confused tying up with that. And it's just yeah. have a conversation. Yeah, yeah the, the biggest thing we do that has been super effective for us is we call it pray for your three. So we'll say we want you to pray for three people by name every day that God will give you a no-brainer moment to share the reason for the hope that's within you. And that little phrase, pray for your three, is caught on. And so at Christmas time, we'll say, invite one of your three. Uh, we're in the middle of the coronavirus uh, pandemic right now, so we'll say reach out to one of your three. When we build a new athletic facility, uh, we'll go in on that concrete floor before we put the gym floor down, and we'll write the names of our three on that. And that's our way of just saying, like, you own it. Let God work within it. Don't worry about the method. Worry about having a passion for the person. And, and not feel guilty if they don't come to Christ. Some people, it's right. a failure if, if someone doesn't come to Christ. You know, it, the statistics show it takes 7.5 contacts before someone makes an affirmative decision to trust in Jesus. So just realize 
one contact, one conversation, you push them one step closer. Celebrate that. A couple organizational things. I, I think a lot of churches, half of them almost do the sticky thing where the groups have a, have a question about the sermon at least once a week have one of the questions relate to friends who are not church right. or how right. you can connect. Uh, in your discipleship groups, have one of your accountability issues be, I tried to share my faith or I pray for this person or that kind of thing. I do, we do, you do is still going to show from the pulpit or translate. Yeah, we, about, go ahead. Last we've, talked to, we've talked a lot new over the, over the years of Pastor PD about the pastor leading the way. This stat always convicts me. The average number of conversions in the local church in North America per year is zero. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to preach this and we have to model it and we have to be passionate about it. And it's not a magic bullet. I think it's, it really is the pastor leading the way and, and making this a part of their own life. And I'm always convicted about that personally. We're all trying, and we want you to try. You're with Pastor Pedia on evangelism and teaching it and modeling it. Think about it. Keep going, and we'd love to help. Our notes maybe will help as you get these. Thank you very, very much.